Hello again. So, uh, this tutorial is going to be all about the water of crystallization and looking at calculations involving water of crystallization. And this is something that comes up frequently now in um, AS level chemistry. So, first of all, let's have a talk about what we mean by water of crystallization. So, as you can see here, we've got a picture of a crystal. This is a copper sulfate crystal here. Now, crystals obviously have regular arrangements and they have um, you know, defined a definitive structure to them. And the reason that they have this structure is because of the presence of water. Now let's have a look at uh, a little bit more in depth of what this looks like. Obviously you don't need to know what this looks like, but it just helps with our understanding. So here we've got um, these blue uh, molecules here. These are the compound. This, this is the, the part of the compound that we're sort of interested in. So this is the, the copper sulfate, as it were, in our copper sulfate crystal. Now these red bits that go around it are the water of crystallization. So what that means is that the water isn't actually part of the compound itself, but it helps make up its crystalline structure. Now, to sort of simplify that a little bit, this is how I sort of think about it. It's sort of like bricks and mortar, because they have uh, similar sort of ways in which they work. So if, for example, we were to consider that the, um, that the, the compound are, uh, here are these blue blobs, then in terms of um, a, a, a wall, that would be the bricks, the bricks. And the water, as we said, is the water crystallization, which is the red bits here, is sort of like the mortar between those bricks. It's the thing, it's the stuff that keeps it in that regular pattern. So the water crystallization is not part of the compound, but is part of the crystalline structure. And that's what you need to be able to understand, kind of like mortar surrounds bricks in a brick wall to help give it its shape. So if there's water present in the water of crystallization, then that can be lost. We can drive it off uh, by drying it out, basically. So let's have a look at uh, an example. So here then is an example of what happens when you can when you drive off the water of crystallization. So um, you have the hydrate, which obviously contains water because it's a hydrate, and then. So if you heat that then, uh, you produce an anhydrous product. So anhydrous is the word that we use to say that it does not contain water anymore. An anhydrous product and water, which is obviously lost. So for example here, um, we've got uh, some copper sulfate um, crystals here with water crystallization in it. That's the, that's the blue stuff. And uh, we've heated it on a watch glass here, and you can actually see the color change here. So th this white powder here, this is this is the anhydrous product. So if here you've got copper sulfate, CuSO4, uh, and then you've got five waters. Now this dot, this dot here tells us that um, that, that, that what follows it surrounds it. It's not part of the compound, but it, it makes up its crystalline structure. So that's what that dot means. So it, mean, it means that for every copper sulfate that we have, there are five molecules of water that surround it to help give us its crystalline structure. Um, so this blue stuff here then is the hydrate, and this white stuff is the anhydrous product, so the copper sulfate but without the water now. And we've obviously lost the water. So uh, we can drive off the water by heating it. Now obviously, because of the law of conservation of mass, um, you know, the mass on this side, on the reactant side, is gonna be equal to that on the product side. And so if we know the weights of two of these things, or the masses of two of these things, I should say, then we can work out. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at one more thing that we need to know then. So let's bear in mind now, you know, we've got this hydrate, gives us anhydrous product of water. If in doubt, always think back to this. So we're looking at the det determination of XH2O. So at the moment, what we're going to say, the questions we're going to look at, is where we don't know how many water molecules there are. You know, if we look back to this one here, we said that there are five water molecules around each copper sulfate in the, in the crystalline structure. But what if we don't know what that is? How are we going to figure it out? And that is what we're going to look at now. So this is the equation that you need to know. So XH2O, so you know whatever this value of X is, it's going to be equal to the moles of water lost divided by the moles of the anhydrous compound. So there's two things we need to know here. We need to know how many moles of something of the water we've got and how many moles of the anhydrous compound we've got. So it's actually a very simple calculation when you think about it. Now, the other bit of um, knowledge we need to arm ourselves with is our um, good old friend, the 
formula triangle for moles mass and relative formula mass. So, you know, here we know that if we know what the mass of something is and we know what the um, or the MR of it is, the relative formula mass of it is, then we can work out how many moles of it there are. So let's have a look, just bear these two things in mind now as we're looking at some examples. So let's go, let's dive straight in and have a look at an example. Okay, so I've put up our two equations up on the top just because, you know, that's what we're going to be referring to. So whenever you see one of these questions on determination of x, h, 2, these are the two things you want to be calling to mind here. Okay, the moles of the water loss divided by the moles of an anhydrous compound. So let's have a look at uh, the example I've got written here. I'm going to pick out the important bit here. So a sample of hydrated copper sulfate with a mass of 0.869 grams was heated to drive off the water of crystallization and was then found to have a mass of 0.556 grams. So that is going to be, um, you know, the product, the energy product, and calculate the value of x. So let's have a little look at uh, what we're going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to annotate my my equation here because that will help me visualize a lot easier what I've got and what I haven't got. So a hydrated copper sulfate with a mass of 0.869 grams. That's that. Um, and I've got uh, um, a product then of 0.556 grams. 556 grams. So obviously you know, I can work out how many moles of this I've got, but at the moment I can't work out how many moles of water lost um, that, that I have, which is what I need to know. But obviously remember, the law of conservation of mass states that whatever goes in must come out. So then, if I've got 0.869 grams going in, and I've got 0.556 grams here coming out, then the remaining mass must be the water. So in this case, it's 0.313 grams, because we've worked that out. Okay, so let's have a look at the calculations we're going to need to know here. So uh, I've worked out the mass of the water, and I said that the mass of the water is going to be 0.313 grams. We've worked that out already. Okay, so the two things we need to know then are the moles of the water and the moles of the anhydrous compact. So let's have a look at the moles of water. So we're going to use our formula triangle up here then for this. So the moles of water then is going to be uh, the mass divided by the relative formula mass, molecular mass, which is going to be 0.313 divided by 18.02. That's what it is for water. That gives us 0.01737 moles. Okay, so we've worked out how many of that we've got. Let's have a look then at the moles of the anhydrous compound then. So again, mass over MR, so we've got the mass of 0.0. 5.56 divided by its MR, which is 159.6. And then if we uh, divide those out then, 0.556, that's going to give us uh, 0.00348 moles of that. Um, so obviously the moles of the water lost which is 0.01737. Divide that then by the moles of the anhydrous compound, which is 0.00348. So this should now give us the value for x, which is 4.991. But obviously, you know, if we're sort of like empirical formula here, you know, it's, it's a, Sort of like it, but you know, this can't be a, a decimal number here, can it? Because you've got to have whole numbers. So that's going to be 5. So the value of x then is 5 for that. Let's have a look at another example then. A uh, slightly different layout here. So we've got a 16.4 gram sample of hydrated calcium sulfate then. It's heated until all the water is driven off. The water lost. So this is why it's slightly different here. Now, that's why it's very important to read the question carefully. It's found to have a mass of 3.4 grams. Find the formula of the hydrates. There's two things here that if you're not careful, you would get wrong. So let's have a look at what we've got then. And so I'm going to, again, as usual, I'm going to annotate my thing first. So I've got 16.4 grams of this. 
and I've got the water lost was found to have a mass of 3.4 grams, so that's why it's different this time. That's got 3.4 grams. So obviously we can work out the mass of the calcium sulfate that was produced then, because 16.4 grams take away 3.4 is going to be 13.0. Okay, so let's have a look again at what information we're going to need here then. So uh, we've worked out the mass then of the anhydrous compound, because we said that was going to be 13.0 grams. Uh, so let's have a look at the moles of the anhydrous compound then, why not? Let's go for that first. So the moles of the anhydrous compound then, this is going to, you know, moles is, is mass, which is 13 divided by the relative formula mass, which is, if you work it out, is 136. 6.0. Not point not nine five. Oops, that's meant to be by five nine moles. Um, let's have a look then at the moles of water. See, this is too easy. We're just flying through these. So you know, mass. We're using our formula for mass three point four divided by the formula, which is going to be eighteen point oh two. It's going to be not point one. Eight eight six eight moles. Okay, so we've got those two bits of information there. Then let's have a look at uh, how we're going to determine what the value of x is. Then, so uh, it's going to be the moles of the water lost, zero point one eight eight six eight, divided by the moles of anhydrous compound nine five. Nine. And that's going to give us 1.974. And you know, obviously, that's going to, we're going to have to round that up, so that's going to be 2. 2. Um, now, this is where you could lose you know, another mark if you're not careful, because it's not just asking you for 2. It's not, that's not the answer. It's asking you for the formula of the hydrate. So, the formula of the hydrate, then, you know, you've got the hydrate up here, you just need to put in the number of x. So, it's going to be CA. SO4 dot, remember that dot tells us it's the water crystallization, 2H2O. Okay, so that is the final answer for this then. Okay, so the last one we're going to look at, um, this is going to be a challenge for you. So uh, what you can do is you can have a look at the question, read through it, pause the video, and have a go at it, and then I'll show the answer in a couple of seconds. So it says a hydrate is determined to be 45.43% water and 54.57% um, cobalt chloride. Find the chemical formula for this hydrate. Okay, there's a little hint there to help you if you're not sure. So uh, if you pause it now, in about five seconds, I'll uh, give the answer. Okay, so here is the answer along with the workings out. Okay, so I hope that that's really helped you with um, determination of XH2O and has made it a little bit more simple than you may have thought it would be. Okay, good luck.